Hi, Laura. Good morning. Good morning. I found you. And now what I need to do quickly is find captioning. Did you find Emily? <laughs> There's Emily. Hello. I like your hair. Oh, thank you. One moment. Oh, I get captioning figured out quickly. There she is. Hi, Jody. Okay. Okay, well, I guess it is the top of the hour. We just popped into this room really quickly after a fabulous uh, general session, and I'm so glad that you all are with us and ready to listen and learn in this information fair here at our 152nd annual meeting for ex officio trustees. Super exciting. And this information fair is music transition and orientation and mobility. If you need captioning, please go to the chat. And I have dropped in the chat, or I've dropped in the stream link, pardon me. And what I'm going to do now also is switch over to another document so that I can give you. This is the first round, first of two of this information fair. Your opening code for information fair one is the word dream. D-R-E-A-M. So we are glad that you are here and I am, uh, I'll monitor the chat for you, Emily and, and Laura, and I'm just going to pass things over to you for great learning. Thanks, Amy. Um, I want to go ahead and put up this quick slide for you guys. Um, are you all seeing this slide or are you seeing the presenter view? We are seeing the presenter view. It's all good. <laughs> no worries. So I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> I can just tell you guys what the slide says. It's not, it's not a huge, important slide. Um, basically, I, I'm Laura Zier. I'm the independent, project, independent Living Project Leader here at APH. Um, Emily Gramani, who's joining us today, is a research assistant for our department. Um, she's worked with me on a few of the products that uh, we released in fiscal 20 and um, hopefully if you guys put up some questions in the chat we can reach those. Um, that's, that's really my plan for this session. This is how we usually do it um, is people just come to our table and they ask us questions. Um, I know that our attendance is a lot higher this year um, which is wonderful. I'm glad that everybody has gotten to join us. Um, so I just want to briefly let you guys know what I've released this past year and um, we can we can chat about anything that you guys want to. You guys can ask me any questions you want. Um, two really new exciting products that have come out are uh, Feel the Beat and Music Braille flashcards. And these are products to assist in teaching the music Braille code, um, which through a lot of research, I found out that there's not a lot out there for you guys. Um, so we, we made Feel the Beat um, from a recommendation of the author, Chris Short. She used to be an EOT for us. And then um, we made the music rail flashcards to kind of complement the product. It's just like our other flashcards that we offer. Um, they're braille and print, and those, um, those kind of complement the curriculum just as a, a reinforcer of the code. Um, we've also released the new 100 boards, uh, both Nimeth and UEB. The UEB is a brand new release. Um, we just updated the Nimeth version. And then I got the Wilson Reading System 3 UEB update out last year. Um, so really what I'd, I'd love to do is just kind of open it up for questions. I want to know um, what you guys are interested in in the realm of independent living, which kind of umbrellas a whole lot of stuff. 
Does anybody have any questions yet? No. No right, questions well, yet. <laughs> well, um, this, is, this is how the virtual environment is different because usually by now I've been bombarded by 20 people asking me, what's the price of this and when is this going to be out? Um, so I can tell you that we're not currently working on any orientation mobility things. Um, I, I'm, I don't have any product submissions in that area. I really would like to bulk up our transition offerings. And um, I know that there are people out there that have ideas and wants and needs and they just haven't expressed those. Um, but I'd, I'd love for you guys to reach out to me. You can do it here. If this is too public of a forum, you can send me an email. Um, it's lar it's L Z I E R E R L Z -er at APH.org. Um, just quickly in the chat, could, could, could everybody that is a teacher, a TVI O&M instructor, can you just type a, yay, a Y in the chat? Awesome. So I figured, I figured a giant portion of this audience would be teachers. I'm really curious to know if we happen to draw any parents into here. Are there any parents here? So in the, in the, in the world of COVID, um, I know that our parents have become teachers and it's a hard role to fill, um, especially when there's all of these access technologies that you need to learn to use, um, things that you didn't go to school for are being taught to your children. And that's where APH comes into play to try and help you guys. Um, I did help on three different webinars over the summer trying to promote our products, but also show you how those can be used in a virtual world. Um, one of our products that has been highlighted often is a software for orientation mobility called Crossings with No Traffic Control. And we did a webinar. I would love for you guys to check that out if you're o and professionals. Um, it's it's on, our, on our website, our APH at Home webinars. And it shares some case studies on how you can use that product virtually and um, remotely and how you can use it with team viewers so that you guys can control the computer screen on the other side and assist the student in using the software and learning the concepts that are taught through that curriculum. I don't have a half an hour of words for you guys. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I really, I'm really interested to know if you guys have any ideas about what is needed in the area of transition, because that's where I, I, I have a big passion for the transition population. So is anybody missing anything that they would like for us to try and fill? I am trying to work on a careers for the blind curriculum and also a money management curriculum, but those are just in the works. Hey, Chris. Um, so helping young adults discover their unique abilities, that I would believe would probably go in with the transition curriculum. Um, I feel like that is, uh, self-advocacy would fall there. And, um, you know, self-determination, trying to feel the confidence in your abilities and know that you can do things even if people think you can't. Um, we, we're all proof of that. And especially those of us who have had vision problems, um, they, might, they might tell you that you, you can't achieve a thing, but you can, um, hopefully. Hopefully you guys watched Tyler yesterday in his um, really uplifting talk. 
building a network. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to work hand in hand with Career Connect um, and Vision Aware, but I'm, I'm having some struggles with that. It's been a really crazy time this year. I'm sure everybody <laughs> understands that. Um, but we would like to create a curriculum for students in the transition population going into the working world and teaching them not only how to get a job, um, but teaching them the soft skills as well that goes along with that and um, would help them maintain that position and strive for promotion. I was really hoping you guys would have some comments. Um, okay, well, how about this? How about I can show you guys Feel the Beat if you're interested in seeing that. Um, I think it's a pretty unique product. Emily helped me on this one because she has some background in music. Um, she's also a Braille transcriptionist. And I, I have a consultant that knows the music Braille code who did the music Braille portion of this product for me. So the product, the bulk of the product is a lesson plan book. Hello? Hello. I'm sorry. Um, the main portion of that product is a lesson plan book, which lines out different lessons on different music concepts, notes. It also goes through, um, it shows you the music so that you can play along and learn the music and the code. So just for example, the author, Chris Short, um, she wrote a couple of little short songs, and this is the D song to introduce the D note. Now, along with this product comes a music book, and I'm gonna show you the teacher edition, but we also have the student edition, which is just in Braille. Um, this is gonna have your songs, any notes that you might, um, any hints, there's a recorder hint. So this is using the soprano recorder to teach the code. Um, there's not a recorder included in the kit because you can get one a lot cheaper from somewhere else. Um, and the most exciting part is the fingering and note chart that comes along with this product. This will show you the notes in print on a staff they show you the notes as they're transcribed into Braille. And then it shows you the recorder fingerings for each of those notes so that you know where to place your fingers on your recorder to make that sound. Does anybody have any questions about the music Braille products that we have out right now? The, um, are the teaching materials accessible to the blind? Yes, so the, um, the lesson plan book is available as BRF. Um, you can access that through our website. And I would recommend just using the student edition of the music book um, to follow along with the Braille music. Um, that, would be, that would be probably ideal. I think I saw another question pop up there. Yes, Sharon asked, uh, has anyone used it with younger students, five-year-olds? No. Um, so it's recommended to work in tandem with um, the, the same grade where your sighted peers are gonna learn music um, Chris suggests that you start this maybe a semester before just so that you're familiar with the terms and um, you can kind of relate to what the music teacher is teaching to your sighted peers. Um, but you would work hand in hand with a TDI and the music teacher on working through this curriculum. Cool. <laughs> I feel um, I feel like we need to push this forward somehow, but I honestly don't know what you guys would like to hear. Um, 
Laura, there was one uh, right before music. Someone asked about, um, Sharon asked about online forums for juniors and seniors preparing for college. Yeah, we're not there yet. Um, I know that Career Connect is trying to pull things together. We are not in the same department as Career Connect. So it's kind of difficult to know everything that they're working on. Um, I know that there are sites out there and I've referred to them in my own research. Um, but I am not a teacher of visually impaired and I don't want to recommend one over the other. Um, I can tell you that TSBVI has some great resources and um, a lot of the summer transition programs have a lot of great resources for job seekers as well. All right, Sharon's looking for more information on street crossing program. Yeah, I, I, I can watched tell the you, webinar. I can tell you a little bit about that. It did come out in 2019 um, or 2018, maybe. Um, but it's been a very popular product. Um, I think we had one of the largest attendance um, of all the webinars over the summer on that topic. Um, I'm going to attribute that to Donna Sauerberger because she's a superstar and everybody wanted to see her. Um, but I can share my screen and show you guys a little bit of that program if you'd like. Okay, so um, up on the screen, you've got the opening chapter of the crossing software. Is that showing up right, Emily? Yes. Um, so this, this goes through, this first chapter goes through. Um, time right here. Oh, no, she can't see you. Oh, there's. Can we mute? Thank you. I was hearing some background noise. Um, so this goes through basically the product. It, it basically tells you how to use it. That's the first chapter. It's for the instructor. Um, one really important thing to understand about this product is that um, you have to use it with your student. It's not, it's not something you can just put in front of your student and walk away and let them go through. Um, it's it's highly recommended that you sit with them and help them gain the skills and the concepts for learning how to safely cross the street where there isn't a crosswalk or a stoplight. Um, and it will run you through different scenarios and you can practice on the keyboard. So um, there, is, there is the prerequisite of kind of being able to use a keyboard. Um, not so much typing, and honestly, if the students don't know the letters on the keyboard, um, you can just guide them as to what button they need to push. Um, there is a, there's a delay built into the system that helps if a student has um, a delay from, you know, motor, their motor ability. Um, and basically what you do is you, you time your student crossing a very specific street. There's, there's instructions in there as to the site that you would choose. And you enter in their time that it took them to cross to the other side. And then you build from there. You learn how to listen for cars. You learn how to hear cars sooner. Um, and, and it's a repeated practice. And the really great thing is that when you're out there and you're teaching o &M, it's really hard to recreate a situation that's happened, especially a car approach. Um, you're not going to just run after that car and ask him, go around the block again so that my student can hear this. Um, but you can replay events and scenarios inside of this program so that they can, you can see if they've improved. Um, there's, there's reporting that comes out of this and there's also videos with discussion and the very last chapter kind of guides the instructor on how to take what you've done in the software program and then transfer it to real life instruction. Okay. So that's the crossings program. Um, I, I'd love to answer questions on that if anybody has questions on it. I know that it's pretty popular. So 
Um, if anybody wants to ask me anything about that, definitely, I, I was project leader on that. Okay, well, I have a question for you guys. Um, type Y in the chat if you have used the quick and easy ECC binder. Wow, it looks like we've only got one. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so there we go. Um, Great, thanks, Naomi. Um, so if you guys have been involved in annual meeting um, before, if you were around last year, you may have found out that I am creating that content in an app. Um, it will be iOS and Android released at the same time, I believe. Um, we're getting really close to beta testing for that. And if anybody is interested in beta testing that ECC app, it's essentially the same content that's in the binder, but in a portable version. Um, I would love for you guys to send an email to me and let me know that you're interested in that beta test. I'll be putting up a social media call probably next week to try and get that beta test filled so that we can get that project out as soon as possible. Um, it has reporting as well, um, basically like the handwritten log that's in the front of that binder. Um, and it sorts the lessons in a bunch of different ways so that if you're out on the go, um, say you're at the grocery store, you can, you can filter everything by location or you can filter everything by the items that you need to complete those tasks. So let's say you've just got an apple. Um, maybe there's something you can do with an apple. You can look through the items needed list and pick out the different types of things. Um, and then it'll spit out the lessons that include those different items. Awesome, Sharon. If you could send me an email and let me know, um, that would be super. I'd love to get it in the hands of as many people as possible. That's the good thing about a, um, a digital product is that we don't have a limit on how many units or prototypes we're gonna have. We can pretty much just send it out to as many people as possible. I can tell you what else is in the works. Um, right now that's you know expected um probably in a few years two years roughly um we're gonna have the wilson reading system the newest edition out we are working on um making that braille and large print accessible so um the wilson reading system ueb that just recently came out is the older version um but we were hearing that it was just needed until that four could come out. So um, that has been released in the UEB code. Um, and I, I don't know if any of you guys joined um, Greg in his presentation yesterday. Um, we're working on a partnership with Ira right now, trying to get student feedback, teacher feedback on using Ira for daily living tasks for um, assisting digital assignments online. They, they have TeamViewer at IRA, so they can remote into your computer. Um, if anybody's not familiar with IRA, it's a visual interpretation service where you call in and there are vetted agents that can then use your smartphone camera to help you navigate or read something. Um, and we're trying, to, we're trying to see what the impact of that could be on transition age students right now um, with so much remote learning going on, um, different platforms not being accessible. It would be really helpful to have that crutch if you can't figure it out any other way. Um, so we're currently running a beta test on um, students 18 and over for that product. Um, I'm working with the Hatland Center right now. I've got the Washington State School for the Blind. Um, hopefully we're gonna get them started really soon. 
And um, if anybody has transition age students that um, we, we need to keep it over 18 at this point because we don't have all the le legality figured out. Um, you can also shoot me an email for that and I can consider adding you to the, to the, the pilot run of that project. I feel like I should have like given coffee to everybody somehow before this. This is very different than our normal annual meeting. Um, and I really, I feel unprepared at this point because I don't, I don't have a presentation for you all. Um, well, I don't, you know what, I don't feel that way at all, Laura. I think that this is just supposed to be very conversational and fluid. I think that some sessions might be having a little bit more information, but probably most are conversational. So don't be hard on yourself in any way. I think it's great to know what things are in the hopper, what you're working on, and you never know. Um, we might have a plethora of questions and we can't keep up the next time, but nonetheless, you're here and meeting our needs. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. And just so that all of you know too, just as a reminder, you know, please take this time that if you do have some questions that, that you wanna ask that just pop into your head, we're here, ask away. Uh, please note that this is the first round of our information fair. And there is not a closing code right now here coming at the bottom of the hour at 1030. You will receive the closing code at the end of your next rotation. So know that you're not missing anything at all. And uh, there are people who are talking about, you know what, they're drinking their coffee with us. So you didn't need to bring any coffee with you, uh, Laura. There, we're, we're like, Probably some people are too fisted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really early on the West Coast right now. So maybe you guys are just, just waking up. Well, um, I'm not going to take offense to it. I, um, I'm definitely, I, I like to have conversations. Um, the the in-person conversation is a great thing for me. And I know that a lot of you all have had that with me at previous annual meetings. And I think that's really just the aspect that's missing here. But I really want to appreciate, or I really want to thank everybody for coming and learning what you can um, about the products that we're, that we're making and that we've released. Um, it would be really great if there was any follow-up questions, if you guys would just send that to me in an email. I'm pretty responsive. Um, and I'd love to meet you all in person someday. Um, hopefully next year we can all physically be together. So at this point then uh, you are, you know, it's a couple minutes before you're free to go ahead and, and leave the room, check your schedule, see what you might want to hop on to next. And we'll have a few moments of pausing for right now as you jump into another room and we may wait for our new friends to jump in. Thanks everybody. And just so you know, Laura and Emily, uh, this conversation between the, the few of us here uh, at APH, I did, have t I did have the switch on for everybody to be muted. Um, so I'm not really sure what happened. And when we heard a little bit of feedback, I was quick to go in but it seemed like everybody was muted. So it was one of those really weird things that happened. And then in the middle, there were some other glitches going on and hopefully you didn't hear my phone ring. Nope. Mm -mm. There were some cat anyway. So just lots going on simultaneously, but I would say it's two thumbs up. <laughs> I'm just glad my cat hasn't come in here yet to tell me he's hungry. We enjoy kitty cats. Oh, you'd hear him. <laughs> well, Jane Thompson said you did a great job. Thanks, Jane. And Chris Tab says thank you. Um, I, I think it's Eileen. Eileen, thank you, and Sharon, thank you. It's a lot of people who are saying thank you. It's it's hard to present in a vacuum. Um, it's and, not it's not quite as bad in this meeting space than it is on a webinar. We will wait another few, uh, we'll wait about another 60 seconds and then we'll restart. 
I have a question. Can you hear me? Hi, we can hear you. Um, I just sat through the, the session, and so there's no end code to this session? That is correct. So what, is, uh, what happens is uh, the, the sessions for uh, this uh, information fair is grouped, and so you received an opening code at 10 o'clock, and you will receive a closing code, uh, not now here at 1030, after your next session. But that was a good so what, question. So what if I have other sessions to attend to uh, and I can't get back to, to this session? How do I get the You're, info? No, 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 I understand. So, if, so um, what I can tell you is, is that all of these sessions for the information here have the same opening code and closing code. And you, everybody received the same opening code. Uh, I think it was Dream. I'd have to go back and look. And so can you give so me I have dream for what, the beginning code. Pardon? I have dream for the beginning code, yes. Okay. So what information fair are you headed into next, may I ask? Um let me look at my Because that's where you're gonna get the closing code. Well, I'm actually um I'm at work, so I had to kind of sparingly um do these sessions and my next session is not until 12 o'clock, but I can't stay on that long at work. So, oh. um, so yeah, I had from 9 to 9.30 this session, okay. and then I have, I'm sorry, I have a 12 o'clock session. Okay. So um, you're, you're just taking bits and pieces is what I'm understanding. Um, correct. If, if, okay, I'm going to put my email in the chat, and if you'll send me an email, I'm going to put it in the chat. The, I, I oh, you're on the phone. The phone. Yes. I mean, you can give me your email now yep. and, and I can email Please you do. that. Yep. We will do that. So it is A Campbell. So A C A M P B E L L at APH.com. APH.org. Dot org. Dot org. Sorry. And so I run it on iTunes. I email you in request to the closing code for this session. Is yes. that right? Yes. Let's just okay. talk about, I will, I'll give a better explanation. We'll chat about it over email. You have no need to worry. We'll chat about it then okay. and I thank you for your flexibility. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. It is at the bottom of the hour and we are so happy that you have popped into our information fair. Uh, you will, you received your opening code at the start at 10 o'clock at the last time. We ask you and you will receive the closing code at the, at the end conclusion of this rotation. We ask for everybody to be able to uh, please go in and mute yourself. And uh, at this time, if you will mute yourself. And I am, so you are with us here for music, transition and orientation and mobility. And this is going to be, uh, just imagine yourself in a room, uh, seated around a table, getting ready to have some great con you know, conversation. And uh, I'm ready to pass it over to you, Emily and Laura, and I will see you all at the very end with the closing code. Thanks, Amy. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Laura Zier. I'm the Independent Living Project Leader at APH. Um, with us today, we have Emily Grimani. She is a research assistant in our department. She has helped me with a couple of the projects that are the products that have been released this year. Um, and I just want to kind of go through what has been released. And I've, I saw a couple of familiar faces when I was when I was watching you guys roll in. So I'm hoping I can hear from you guys today. Um, maybe it'll be a little bit more like we're in person. Um, I'm, I'm very much used to those people coming up to my table and just talking to me and having tons of questions. Um, but first, I want to tell you guys about a couple of products that are going to help with um, teaching the music braille code and reinforcing that. Um, there really aren't a lot of products out there for the music braille code um, as far as the curriculum is concerned. And um, one of our former EOTs, Chris Short, uh, from Iowa, she, she decided that that was something that we really needed to offer. Um, so she came up with this wonderful idea.
to put together a curriculum to teach the Braille code um, using the Soprano recorder. So me, through, through a lot of iterations of that product, um, we finally came up with a, a nice lesson plan book and a student music book as well as a teacher music book. Um, and just briefly, I'm gonna show you guys what that product looks like. Um, I know there's been a lot of interest in it. So the product, the main part of the product, the lesson plan book, it's just an 11 half by 11 spiral bound book. And inside it will, there's, there's some basic concepts that it'll teach you, um, but really it just dives into learning the notes and then playing the notes. Um, there are some familiar tunes in here that we've included like Old MacDonald and you can play along with your student and um, feel very nice and creative at, at the same time as you're teaching the music braille code. Um, there are a lot of songs in here that Chris just made up on our own to use the example, to give the example of how to play the F sharp. Um, so then there's the teacher edition of the music book, which will go through the songs. It follows the same order as the student book. And um, it shows the print music on a scale, but then it also shows the simulated braille um, so that you can see what the student has in front of them. Um, additionally, it comes with a super great fingering and note chart. And this shows the, the, the music notes in print on the scale. It shows them in braille and then it shows the proper finger recordings for playing that on, on the recorder. And then after we started working on that, I kept doing some, some research and finding out that there were even less things out there than I expected there would be for music. Um, APH does not offer music products other than the two that we've released outside of the Banna code. Um, I believe that we had, we used to um, sell some books a long time ago about learning how to play the guitar, possibly. Um, but I decided that it needed some additional things. Um, you know, just one curriculum isn't enough. You can't just keep going over and over the same book. Um, they're not going to, they're not going to learn anything new if they've already mastered everything in that curriculum. Um, but a way to reinforce the code, um, I came up with the Music Braille flashcards, which are very similar to our Dolch Word cards and our contraction cards. Um, they're print and Braille, and they're just flashcards to teach you the symbols for different things in the Music Braille code. So all of the notes are in there, um, but there's also pedal up and pedal down for piano players. Um, and you can pick and choose um kind of what you what you want to go over with your student it comes with tabs so you can organize the box it also comes with some empty cards so if there's something that say one of your students is in band and there's something that we've missed you can add that onto a card and that would be part of the flashcard set at that point additionally that's come out this year um, the hundred board the new hundred boards were released there's just an updated version of the Nemeth, but the UEB is out now. And the um, Wilson Reading System 3, the UEB update was released in fiscal 20. Um, we are currently starting development on the fourth edition of that. And um, that will take some development time to get into Braille and large print. So the UEB of the older version is out there for you guys. Um, so that you've got something to use until you get the most updated version. Um, I, I would like to go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, if anybody has questions, comments, um, suggestions about anything transition related, anything music related, orientation mobility, um, I'm giving you guys the floor at this point. We had a question about 
opening codes. Um, so for the opening code, that was actually given at the beginning of the first session you attended. So whichever session you were at before this, um, you should have received an opening code and that all the info sessions are all together. Okay. Um, well, uh, Anthony, Anthony you already <laughs> got the code. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's the ending code that they gave you. That's actually what we're going to give at the end of this session. So they already gave it to you. I'm back in, guys. Just to let you know if there's anything. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Amy. I'm going to start picking on you all if nobody has questions. And I think you know who you are. Um, hi, I have a question uh -huh. um, about the music code. I have a student who is primarily focusing on percussion. And I know that that is a different set of symbols because it's not, in a lot of cases, it's not note based. Um, do we know if there are um, things that I can use beyond, like I have access to the music chart, but nothing that's specific to percussion? I know that there are some percussion related symbols in the flashcards. Um, I, I am not from the field of music education. Um, I actually got um, the National Association for Music Educators um, I had them participate in the expert review for that because we were looking for the specific population of K through 12. We didn't want anything that was too advanced, um, but we did want to include um, things that would be helpful for students in band or students that are trying to learn music to go into a music program. Um, it's a very small percentage of these cards that would, would address percussion, I believe. Um, so I don't, I don't know of a good resource to send you to. If you want to send me an email, I can reach out to a couple people and find out if there is a good resource for you. Okay, um, sure. And I, Emily, can you put my email in the chat? Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody, anybody in here is definitely welcome to reach out to me. Um, about anything. Um, if it doesn't happen to be my area of focus, I know who to reach out to. Um, so that that could be helpful. I um, Is Paul still in here? Paul Olson? I am. Hi, Paul. Hello, Laura. I miss you. Um, <laughs> What do you do you have any do you have any thoughts or anything to add in here? Um, any any springboards for ideas? Hmm. I put you on the spot, I know. <laughs> you know, it's not Monday, but it is Friday. <laughs> uh, no, not not right offhand. I just again I I just, I just feel like this is such a nice opportunity to take advantage of these new tools and the ideas that some people have offered up really have turned out to be some, uh, spun us into some new great areas. So no, not, nothing specific, I have to say though. And Emily, I think I saw a question pop up. Um, yeah, we also had David Goldstein had raised his hand, so. Um, David, if you'd like to ask your question. Yes, hi. Um, I just uh, hope that some networking can go on because there are others in the field who work with students of all ages. Uh, I'm involved and I think I saw Brunhild here. Uh, so there are some people uh, who might be thinking that you're, this is wonderful, uh, but some parts of the wheel have already been invented. And so um, I hope that we can maintain contact. Um, and um, I'm in an agency called the National Resource Center for Blind Musicians. Um, and I'm not 
a musician myself, but I know some answers to questions, people who uh, know the answers. Uh, but for the drum and percussion question, a lot of it is done with the same symbols that are used for notes. And so if you want a snare drum, you use the braille note E and you can put in the rhythmic dots so you can make it a snare drum quarter or a half. And, and there are also symbols for drum roll and things like that. There are books out there. Um, I thought that the APH still had in their catalog the Primer of Braille Music by Jenkins. Uh, there's a book called How to Read Braille Music from, um, I guess the easiest place to get it is from um, National Braille Press and Dancing Dots Braille Music Technology has a series of courses that can be used with people of all ages. Thanks, thanks, David. Yeah, um, definitely Dancing Dots is a resource that I have looked at. Um, and David, if you if you don't mind, um, would you send me an email so that I've got your contact information? Because I'd love to reach out. Um, we did one short little webinar on Feel the Beat, but I'd like to get some more information out there um, on the Music Braille Code specifically. So if you don't mind to send me an email, we can stay in contact and I can reach out to you when I, when I get there. Yes, I'm glad to do that. I'll put it in the chat, but I'll also reach out to you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, we did have a question um, from Mary. Are there any new products related to O&M? Um, so I know that there, I know the most popular thing for O&M that has come out recently is the um, software with Donna Sauerberger, the crossings with no traffic control. Um, I know that they are currently working, um, it's in their three year plan with the press to, um, to redo that foundations book. Uh, it, it's probably gonna be, um, a pretty big rewrite because a lot of things have changed. Um, there's been a lot of new technology introduced. Um, so I can tell you there is nothing that's been released this year. Um, the crossing software was definitely the last thing that I worked on. Um, that was, well, that and o and Trivia, which is a trivia game on the Amazon Echo and Google Home speakers. Um, but I know that there are some tactile products that you can use in conjunction with O&M teaching. Um, but as far as O&M specific, um, I've, I've just released that Crossings program recently. And whoever had that question, do you have a need for something in the O&M field? Um, that maybe we could address? Okay, so are there any other questions at this point? Cool. Um, so what I did with the last group when we got to this point um, was I let you guys know what we're kind of, what we're getting close to, um, what we're working on right now. And actually I can call out to you guys, um, if any of you all are interested in um, either of the opportunities that I'm about to talk about, um, please just send me an email and we can, we can definitely talk about that. Um, the first one that we've got going on, um, if you could in the chat, this would be really helpful. Um, just type a Y if you have seen or used the Quick and Easy ECC binder. Okay. No. All 
All right, so this product has, um, it's been out for a few years. Um, I wanna say maybe four years at this point. Um, and it, it's a quick way to get some of those ECC lessons in when you're in the middle of something else or you've only got five or 10 minutes here or there. Um, so during an O&M lesson, you end up at the grocery store. Well, let's see if there's something you can do while you're there. Um, the binder is great. It's laid out really well, it's organized. Um, however, it, it's a binder. So it's always been within the scope of that project to somehow make that digital. Um, and what we've done is we've created an app that has all of the contents inside of that product. Um, there's O&M, there's self-determination, um, and it teaches them how to do small things in a short amount of time. So the app is about to go out for beta testing. It has all of the same contents as that product. And it also has different ways that you can filter those lessons. So if you're in the grocery store, you can filter grocery store and it'll pop out all of those tasks that can be done in the grocery store. Um, as far as comparing labels or getting store assistance, um, all, of, all of that is within the iOS and Android app now. And we're looking for beta testers. I'm about to post that out on social media. So if anybody is interested in that, um, you can definitely send me an email. Uh, the good thing about digital products is we don't have a limited amount of prototypes. So I can send it out to most people who are interested that think they might have time to use that with a student. Um, additionally, we have a partnership that we're starting up with Ira. I don't know if anybody sat in Greg's session yesterday. Um, we're currently running a pilot with Ira on students 18 and older that are in transition services. Um, trying to see how helpful that service can be for um, schoolwork or daily living tasks. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with IRA, it's a service that you call and there are vetted um, agents that can do certain things, use your smartphone camera to help you navigate, to help you um, with reading tasks. They have team viewer, they can go into your computer and help you with some of those digital classrooms that aren't accessible. Um, so we're, we just started that pilot in California and, um, we've got another, another state and a couple other individuals that are interested. Um, but if you happen to have a student or a client that's receiving services that's over the age of 18, reach out to me and I can get you involved in that pilot as well. I saw a hand go up at one point in time. Does anybody know who that was? Certainly, if you want to raise your hand, you can certainly do that and then unmute yourself. That's one of the great things about being in the meeting room. You don't have to ask for permission in order to do that. You can just speak freely. So feel free to do that if you would like. We would love to hear your voice and, and see who you are. Hi there. Um, this is Brynhilda Merck Adam. We used to do the Braille Beats Fine Arts program for about 17 years. Mm -hmm. So back on back on the music question, um, we didn't have any difficulties with the kids learning the code itself, or at least the main you know main components of it. What we were missing were like small um, pieces for practice. So. Um, uh, we kind of wrote our own at the end, but it would really be good to have sort of a handbook of tools so that you could practice, let's just say, uh, learning chords, or you could practice rhythm exercises, or, um, you know, specifics of the code that's tricky for the kids sometimes. There's some um, uh, elements of it that, you know, could be ambiguous unless you had some practice using it because it does two different things at different times. Um, so something like that, like a practice module or something has not been done yet that I know of. There's a, a couple small books that are put out that I think you can get from Dancing Dots, but they're um, kind of simplistic. They're like little individual songs, but we needed something that was, um, you know, further along. 
and that also supported learning music theory. So um, we didn't have any like music theory textbooks, so we created our own for that too. But um, that's the elements that I see uh, missing for the kids that are gonna be going on in music in particular. So um, first I wanna address the music theory part. Um, we intentionally did not include that um, because our, our product was targeted for the TVI um, to work in conjunction with a music teacher. They should be learning music theory in music class. Um, so what, what we were trying to do was just give them a way to learn the music braille code along the same time that their peers are learning notes, how to count notes, how, how to identify where a note is on the scale. Um, now, as far as the other part, I would, love to work on something like that. And if you would be interested or somebody else that you work with would be interested in submitting that idea through APH, I would definitely support that. Um, granted, there's a giant committee that looks at our submissions, so I don't know if they would support it, but I would definitely support that. I would, I would, I would like to do something like that to kind of expand the reach of the music curriculum. Oh, that, that'd be really great. And I understand the theory um, that, you know, it needs to be taught there, but there were no um, supporting tools that we found. And because our program actually did uh, teach theory, it was a big part of, of, of our program for those right. kids that were really moving on. Um, and sure, we'd love to work with you. And probably some of our students that have gone on and become music therapists and music teachers would love to help with that too. That sounds wonderful. Please, please reach out to me. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Laura, we had a question a while back. Um, Patricia said, um, you've mentioned, you haven't mentioned art. There used to be an APH product that showed tactile representations of famous pieces of art. Can we bring something like that back? So the, so the fine arts category kind of got split um, amongst the project leaders. And Tristan Pierce actually um, heads up most of the fine arts kind of stuff. She's the multiple disability physical education project leader. Um, but she's been doing the, um, the tactile coloring books um, and, and different, different products like that. So I think Tristan is really the one to reach out to. Um, Emily can drop her email in the chat for you guys but she would be the one to reach out to about that product or any similar products. As far as fine arts are concerned, I've just fallen into the music category so far. Okay, and then we have Rudolph asks, is there anything being created for o &M to identify electric vehicles? No, and actually, um, I, don't, I don't wanna speak as an o &M professional because I'm not one. Um, but working closely with Donna Sauerberger, I would almost recommend that you look at her website. Um, it seems to be, the research seems to state that it's not so much the sound of the engine, it's the sound of the tires on the ground that you need to be listening for. Um, so yes, there are quiet cars but they still have tires and they still hit the ground and it still makes a different sound when it's raining. Um, and I think that's where, I think that's where the focus needs to stay is not so much on the sound of the car engine, just the, the presence of a car. Does that answer your question? She said, thank you. I'm new in the field, just learning. Awesome. Okay, so reach, um, definitely, definitely go look at Donna Sauerberger's information. Um, Emily, that's a JonnaSauerberger.com, I believe. I don't um, know how to spell that last name. Oh, okay. It's S-A-U-E-R-B-U-R-G-E-R. -E and even if you just Google her name, you'll find her website. Um, she has tons of information on there, especially um, for, for a new entry into the field. It would be great to look at if you're doing any kind of street crossing. Um, also, she has a section on that page where you can get some ACVREP credit um, just for taking her online course. It's completely free. You take the course, you take a test, and if you pass the test, you get the credit. 
Well, thank you so much, Emily and Laura, for sharing information about music and uh, transition and orientation and mobility. It is now coming up at the top of the hour. Your closing code is home. And I realized that when I gave the opening code back at 10 o'clock, I gave the wrong one. Oops. <laughs> Too much going on at one time. So um, anyway, yes, just getting my documents um, in my NASA uh, screen world over here under control. So peak. nonetheless, I can promise you that this closing code is home. And we ask for you to pop out of this room and pop into our general session for a transition panel, I believe is what is coming up now, transition and adult services during COVID. We would love to see your faces there. And again, Emily and Laura, thank you. Thanks Does. everybody. So the opening code should have been heartbeat. Heart. Beat should have been that opening code that I said incorrectly. <laughs> uh, closing code for today is home. We will see you on the other side, all. Thanks, guys. <laughs>